Hey everybody, welcome back to some more of this tutorial series of the Guild 2 Renaissance with your host as always, Uh Long time no see if you're just watching uh, the Guild 2 stuff because there's like a, what, six month hiatus? Sorry, life things got in the way. I'll have a little annotation on screen if you want to see a quick recap video on that. But if not, let's get on with this tutorial for today. Uh, like I said last time, today is going to be the Scholar one. The next one I do after that is Rogue, and then we're ending on uh, Patron. Although, because this series somehow got so popular, um, maybe I'll end up doing more with this. Maybe I'll end up uh, going to more advanced tutorials on this game later, showing some of the more obscure game mechanics. There are a lot of things in this game that aren't exactly well explained. You'll notice that we're on a higher version patch number this time. Again, you can access this on Steam. Uh, it is not a normal patch that goes. You actually have to go to the properties of the game, go to the beta section, and opt into the newest patch. So it's considered an unstable patch, but I've actually had no issues with it and has improved the game quite a bit. So it's just a little, a lot of little balancing things. You know, pathfinding on carts is better, less glitches, that kind of stuff. Uh, nothing really major to talk about. So let's start with the scholar and hopefully i can do this one faster than i've done them in the past because i ramble so much on this let's uh let's just pick a random small map here and uh we go for the bright pink so we're easy to see so we're gonna play as the scholar this time so the scholar is not too terribly different from what you've already seen a bit of the patron and you've seen quite a bit of the craftsman in that the majority of your businesses are still based around producing goods and selling them either to the market or the local population. But the scholar is a bit more complex than that. If we go over their stats here, they have the uh, distinction, and this is unfortunate, of they do have to pay more for constitution than others. Uh, I believe rogues and craftsmen both pay less unless that was changed in this patch, which I believe it may have been. Their main advantage in terms of stats is that they get rhetoric on a discount, which, as we've gone over before, I'm sure, is very powerful if you're getting into politics. The so scholars tend to do well in politics. They do, they're bad at charisma, oddly enough, but charisma doesn't really play much of a role in many of their jobs. Also, something worth pointing out, although handicraft is what speeds up your business's ability to produce goods in craftsman shops, and I believe patron ones as well, in scholar shops, it's sped up through arcane knowledge instead. So you can pretty much ignore handicrafts with your scholar and get arcane knowledge instead. Like before, like we've gone over before, uh, constitution is really, really important because not just your health bar, but also how old uh, you'll live to be. So we're going to get a bit of that and start with a bit of arcane knowledge and some rhetoric. All right, so let's just go ahead and start. We're going to start with our usual opener of basically pause the game and get our uh, rank up immediately. So they've changed in this patch where now you don't need to actually walk to the town hall to get your title. You can just click the town hall and then click right here. You wish a high so we're going to pay our 500. Bag of coins. You will be notified of the decision shortly. Okay, so we have our scholar buildings here. We have the game on pause speed, which again, as we've gone over before, is not quite paused, but very, very slow. So we can get into the alchemy stuff. This is essentially a magician shop, and then you can go either into the magician side or the inventors and alchemist side. So this makes a lot of weird knickknacks in the game that have different abilities. If you go down the magician's branch, that is mostly things you use to sabotage other people's businesses. They're usually not dangerous, but it things to... Um, it's things to damage or slow down a business, make it so it can't operate for a day, things like that, or to sabotage people in politics. Alchemist Shop is more based on uh, beneficial things, as well as things that tend to sell for a higher price. Uh, you would get things like perfume out of this, where you could wear perfume, go to court, or go to a politics meeting, and people will have a higher favor with you uh, because you're appealing to be around. Next, we have the churches and cathedrals, domes. You get the Protestant ones and the Catholic ones. Your religion will actually change to whatever one you last built. These are very interesting and are, is going to be the first thing we build. Uh, I believe we are Catholic in this one. Yeah, we picked Catholic. So we'll go ahead and just start building a church. Uh, what's the layout of this 
place like. Uh, we'll have one up by here. I just want to make sure the door is easy to get to for the sake of the game's kind of bad pathfinding. And, uh... There we go. Game might be a little bit loud. Anyway. So... The difference between the Protestant and the Catholic Church are twofold. One, they have a few minor different abilities. They're able to make very slightly different things, like uh, the Catholic one is able to make a um, sheet of paper that you use and it absolves you of all crimes, uh, whereas the Protestant one is able to get you an item that you can use to uh, use on another person to try and indict them and say, you should excommunicate these people for such and such unreligious crimes against the Pope kind of thing. Um, which is weird, because it's possible I have those the other way around, actually. I'll have text on screen informing you. Um, the main thing with the church is, though, you make things that are usually worth a good amount of money, but you also can hold mass uh, twice a day. Which means that people will come in, and they'll pay their tithe, their donations, they'll buy some... Uh, some food while they're there, some poems if you put them in the sales stock. They'll buy whatever's in your sales stock. And you'll get some money out of that. You actually get a lot of money out of it if you have a lot of rhetoric because you really whip up the crowd and get them to buy things. The main thing you have to do is try and go out in the streets a lot and convert people to your faith because people who are Protestant aren't going to come to your Catholic church. So it's in your best interest to try and make sure that as many people of your faith are in the town as possible. That's the main goal of the, the church. Next, we have the Pest House, which is the hospital line. This is a really powerful early game, uh, easy moneymaker for the scholar. It, it's pretty hands-off, doesn't require much effort. Basically, you just make the stuff to get everything that treats different illnesses and ailments. You know, bandages for wounds and soap for disease, I believe. Things like that. You also get a few special items like the Miracle Cure, where it's basically snake oil. It's it's a fake cure, but you can walk outside and use your charisma and rhetoric to sell it to people and make some quick cash out of that. You tend to make a lot of money with the Pest House just because soap is free to make. It's just you gather flowers and make it into soap, and soap sells for a lot. And you also, of course, make money from people coming in and wanting your nurses to treat them. You have the Vault, which is a cemetery or crypt. You build this outside of town, usually, because uh, there often isn't room inside town for it. And you can sell all kinds of really weird things. It's one of those weird buildings where they just needed to think of something for the scholar, so they thought of this. It doesn't have many items in it. It's got some kind of effects things, but overall, it's not terribly interesting. You're mostly just selling trinkets and junk with this. And lastly, one of the more interesting ones in the game is the bank slash pawnbroker line which you can mint coin, which you then sell to the market. That's your straight-up kind of money maker. But the main thing... Sorry, I've got the hiccups bad today. The main two things you get are you can have... Um, you, you can make bonds that people can turn in for a stock of iron, gold, or silver. This will likely be purchased by uh, blacksmiths and silversmiths, especially if you're in a, uh, match with a lot of human players, because they can get a good discount to get their business started with that. And the big thing is that you can put up your own money as lending tender in your store, so people can come there to get a loan, with interest, of course. So the more money you pour in that you can then lend out, the more money you're gonna get back from people, let's go up to normal speed, from people who need a loan. So that can be a big long-term money maker as well. We're going to start with the church because it is the most immediately interesting thing. This episode might end up being long despite me trying to kind of speed through it entirely because a lot of scholar buildings are pretty drastically different. And I want to show off as many of them as I can. So we're going to speed this up a little bit now. Oh, and we got our title. So let's go ahead and pick up some more... Archive knowledge and rhetoric. I probably should have gotten a little bit more rhetoric, honestly. Um, we're not even going to try and get married early on, because again, this is just for the sake of teaching you the class. Alright. So we're in the church here. Beauty, this is our new Catholic church. 
And as we can see here, this is what our building improvement sheet looks like. Immediately, we, of course, want the candelabra because that is our business productivity bonus, and those are some of the highest priority in the game. Uh, attractiveness to customers because we want to make sure that uh, people actually come here so we can make our money. We want to give people the ability to come here to change their faith so that we can have a good amount of uh, Catholics coming here. Wrath of God and fire protection. These are, of course, burglary and fire protection. We want workspace so we can have a lot of people. So we start with a little bit of holy water and wheat flour. Wheat flour we're going to be using to make our hosts, which you make 10 at a time. This is what you sell during uh, mass. So we're going to go into the back and start making that. If we go back here, you can also buy pine wood, make it into parchment, and make those into poems. They sell a decent amount. You get some experience for reading a poem, and the person will like you more for reading it to them. So poems are tend to be used in uh, politics. Your real money maker early on, though, is making a lot of hosts and having a high rhetoric character uh, give mass twice a day, which is also great for experience, actually. Speed that up a little bit. And uh, I'm actually going to leave this room just because it's horrible nails and chalkboard noises. And we're going to go ahead and uh, hire a couple people cheap. As you think holy water, again, is free. You can just test people to get holy water from the local well, which I'm actually going to tell one guy to go do. And you tend to want to spend a lot of your time when you own a church kind of looking at the front door and looking for when people start gathering around the front door because that's when you want to hold mass. Again, there's a cooldown on it, so you can only do it twice a day. But it is very much worth doing. You could stay afloat just selling uh, hosts, but it's not the best way to do it. And you make them in groups of 10, too, so make sure you're putting them in your sales stock or else people aren't going to buy them. But it's your real moneymaker, his hosts, and, uh, and tithe. So we're going to speed ahead here until people actually show up. And if you think that you should sell uh, hosts to the market, it's worth a lot more selling it to just people. So we're going to go ahead and actually just tell our cart to go to market. Because we're about to run out of wheat flour. So I'm actually going to tell these two people to run and go get holy water. So we got something going on. So early on, uh, of course, we don't have much money, but you could get a little bit of pine wood early to help bolster your income a little bit. I would recommend maybe five, so let's just... Oh, this is the most imprecise thing in the world. About five, and the rest, unless it's a horrible price, you want wheat flour. And it's worth pointing out, don't get wheat. You want to go to foods and get uh, wheat flour, which unfortunately, they don't have right now. So I guess we're going to make our money off poems then. All right, well, if that's the case, then get as much pine as we can afford. Where would you like to go? Dispatch to our church. Unload. All right, we're going to have to do what we can with this. So no one's masked outside yet. You can start at any time and let people just walk in. Uh, it doesn't always work out the best, though. All right, we're almost done on that. And I'm probably going to start... F oh, okay, Production they're back. Sweet. has been interrupted. So be it. All right, get everyone on making some parchment. And once we get a little bit of money, we actually would like to free up some more room here. So there are set times every day when people tend to come to mass. The most likely time is as soon as everyone gets off work at night. Okay, you can already see right there. He has attend church set as his goal right now, which means that workers are going to actually start coming by now and wanting to attend church. So I could wait a little bit longer, but for the sake of the tutorial, I just want to show you. So we want to give sermon. And are we close to a level? We are very close to a level. Let's just dump it in something for the sake of speeding this up a little bit. We'll do empathy, which we do have a discount to, which is seeing crimes and being better at looking through rhetoric in court. And uh, I like motivational artist. Oh, God. Their that your 
shall learn to love and respect so speed this up a little bit you can see there there's a progress bar you can you heard there yet yeah, we're making money now some people are buying some hosts, which is nice. Production has been interrupted. And we have our people in the basement working on poems now that we have all that parchment made. So we're making bits of money here. It's not much. Our church isn't exactly popular yet, and I don't know what the religious breakdown of this city is. It's possible that there are a lot more Protestants than Catholics. Luckily, you do get the ability... Oh yeah, and we can praise and libel people. This is a very powerful thing for court. If we open up politics here, we could pick to praise the mayor. And because we're, pr we're praising the mayor during this, uh, the people who listen to us are going to like the mayor more. We can use this to make sure that the people that, that like us are in the favor of the people. And I believe the people uh, that we praise will actually like us for it. So if you suck up to the people who vote you in in politics, you have a better chance of staying in. You can also liable someone. And you can only do this once per sermon, but you can liable someone, which is you insult them, say that they're no good. That's to try and get someone to fall out of the good graces. Maybe you do that to someone whose spot you want to take in politics. You know, take the mayor's spot. Has been in so that's actually a very powerful ability that the scholar has. Let's dump all of that there. And they have nothing else to do right now, so they're just going to go get holy water. Once we upgrade the building once, we're going to be able to get the ability to gain believers by walking out in the street with our people and preaching to try and get people to change to whatever our religion is. Uh, that's another very powerful ability, but that's a level two one. So I don't think you'll get a chance to see it here today. And we're almost done our sermon here. You see, we still have tons of hosts left. Sometimes if you have a really popular church, you can blow through those hosts like they're nothing. But that was your typical first ever sermon. Got a little chunk of experience out of it. It's pretty nice, but it wasn't life changing. All we can kind of do is make some money off our poems at the end of the day and start a little bit slow. So we're going to send that to the market, unload it, because I'd like to use some of the money to buy some more pine wood to keep the money train rolling. He might as well just help with uh, getting holy water for now. We can we can sell holy water if we want to. We may actually get a bit quick cash. It's not very profitable, but better than nothing. So it works. And we'll just see how much we made here. We made a solid 3,000 or so off that, which is actually... Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Check foods. We do have some wheat flour now, but we actually have so many hosts that I'm not terribly concerned. Let's buy a ton of pine wood there. But you can see the poems are a big money maker. Wherever it takes me. If you can afford to get the pine early on, it really depends on what city you're on uh, in terms of what the prices are for these things. And the second that gets back, we're going to tell them to get back on making parchment. We have some money to, to blow now. So we are going to get some more storage slots. The sales tax has been changed. Sales tax, 20%. Okay. It's good to keep an eye on the sales tax. And she wants to attend church, I think. Yeah, there's some people who want to attend church, but uh, we can't right now. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, you can use it to pur purify uh, poisoned wells. I forgot to bring that up. It's You almost never use that uh, feature. Divide and conquer. All right, and I'm actually going to dump some, uh, yeah, some holy water on the cart just Would to make like a little bit of quick cash off You're the market. But way. we've actually got the money train rolling now, so let's get another building here. I want to show you next the pest house because it is the easiest one to set up. So we're going to go ahead and just pop one down there. Again, a pest house is essentially a very low quality hospital. But it's a very solid money maker, so that's going to help us get the money to start up the other businesses. In general, for a new player of the game, I would recommend a pest house as their first scholar building. But if you're a bit accustomed to the game and you want something that's just really interesting from the get-go, a church is definitely one of the most interesting businesses in the game. Um, it's very hands-on. It has very interesting things you make that you're often full of using. You have a, it unlocks a lot of abilities in court, a lot of things that aid you in court, which is very good. 
illness in the city. You can see what illnesses are in the city here. Yeah, forgot about this. This tells you every illness currently in the city. And on the right, it says what you need to fix it. So a sprain and a cold, you need bandages. Influenza, burns, leprosy, you need a medicine bottle and then pain medication for broken bone, tooth rot, pneumonia, and black death. So her job is going to be to... Uh, actually, you know what? And now... He's the owner of both, business, both businesses right now, so we're going to have him come in here and start making things. But all we need is lavender, which you get in groups of four, and for every two, you get a soap. So for every lavender you get, or for every group of lavender you get, you can make two bars of soap. And you can see there, soap sells for quite a bit at the market. So it's actually pretty solid. Base price, if you're selling the sales stock, not worth a ton. And of course, some of the money you make off that is just... Um, I'll have her on Lavender for whenever she gets back, actually. Uh, some of the money you make off that will just be um, from actually treating the wounds, which is how you get more money than just selling it in sales stock. But the soap you make in such abundance that you can afford to just start dumping it off on the market because you're going to have so much extra to work with. So you need a waiting bench, of course, because you need it to be attractive to people to actually have them come in. Productivity is incredibly important. And the Miracle Cure. So the Miracle Cure, you're going to need to buy honey for it, which can be expensive depending on how many orchards are around selling things to the, uh, to the local market. But you also need lavender, which you're going to have a ton of. So we, you can see here that we start with some wool. We're using it to make bandages. So Miracle Cures you get in groups of three, which actually makes them pretty valuable. They suck at selling in the sales stock or to the market, but because you're a scholar, you've probably got some rhetoric. Because you get it at such a discount. Well, you can use that rhetoric to start pawning it off in the streets to people. I believe you'd get some experience for it, but the main thing you get is a lot of money. If you have a lot of rhetoric, you can really upsell this stuff and make a lot of serious cash out of it. It's just another one of the really cool hands-on things that the scholar has, which is what makes... Uh, the scholar is such an interesting job. So actually, we have our nurse here now, so I'm going to tell her to administer yes. medical treatment. So she's just going to walk around and tend to the wounded. So he caught a cold, and we actually do have bandages. So that guy there can actually be treated. Simple strain, but a band... Well, he definitely had a cold, but the game is a little derpy. You see there, we made some cash. And if we check our wealth here, sales of goods, that was mostly the poems there. You appear to have Miscellaneous, I believe, is where the money goes from treating wounds. So you can see there that from that first one, we made 120 bucks. And that was only for losing uh, one bandage. We only spent one bandage and made 120 gold. That's a really big profit considering how much is a piece of wool in the market right now. One piece of wool, about 40 gold. And one piece of wool gets us five bandages. So we made a really big profit on that. Just buying some storage slots there with what we got. And I think that's enough bandages for now. I'll have him uh, make a little bit of soap. Unfortunately, some of these things do take a while to make. So you're going to want to get a lot of people working in these buildings early to help make up for that. Not much you can do about it early. But I will uh, send the pest house uh, cart to the market to have it there ahead of time so I can buy some honey once we get a little bit more money. So our church, we're going to see, uh, yeah, there are definitely some people out here who want to go to church. So we're going to tell one of the people in the basement to give a sermon. Normally, I would have my own personal guy do every sermon just because he's most likely to have a lot of rhetoric. But like usual, you can actually check the stats of your employees to see what uh, traits tend to be useful. He's really new. He doesn't have many points yet. But you can see here, empathy and rhetoric, because those are useful things to have when you're running a church. As a reminder... We'll check here. Empathy helps you see through all kinds of rhetoric. This is mostly important in politics, though. That is the biggest thing. However, seeing through stealth is also nice, because that means that you can catch crimes better. Yeah, guards will come in with uh, with illnesses quite a bit. Now, we don't have anything to, to treat influenza yet. Again, we're just a pest house. All we can treat are really basic things. But as you go through the ranks, you start to get new things, like the... Um, Cadic, cad, cadicris, cadicris? 
I actually don't know how this is pronounced, but it's basically an item where temporarily it makes you immune to injury and illness. You probably really never need one, but man does it sell for a lot, and it's not that expensive to make. The stuff you use to uh, make it, not that expensive, so you can really make some money off that. An ointment is straight up giving you health back so you don't need to sleep. It is also minor. So we were just getting a notification there saying that we couldn't treat someone because we didn't have what we needed to treat them. Uh, yeah, there's nothing we can do about that right now. But we will lock down this line medicine bottle, which helps with influenza, leprosy, and burns, and then we'll start getting more things later. She has a cold. Sweet, we can treat that. Yeah, we got bandages. Let me have a look. You can see here we're actually starting to accumulate a decent amount of money. Also, uh, well, I forgot to bring up before, this guy will know to go back to doing his job in the basement after he's done the sermon. Let's uh, let's actually, no, not libel, praise. I want to praise the mayor again. As you yeah. Think fit. Just that extra little bit Production to make sure the mayor likes us. It's always good to be on the mayor's side. Production was interrupted because we ran out of parchment. Uh, oh no, because we we don't need any more parchment. Okay. Potatoes? Sweet. Yeah. What are potatoes? Are they edible? I'd like to know as I'm very hungry. Yeah, it's one of the comedy lines that doesn't play very often, but yeah, they can get back to writing poems now. We can write a lot of poems with that. Really make some cash. So things are going well with our businesses early on. The next thing I want to get is the, uh, tinch, titchery? Titchery. Tinchery. And, uh, then we're going to get a pawnbroker, and we're probably not going to bother with a vault, I don't think. It's not terribly interesting. You know what? I'll bother with it. Why not? I'll, I'll tack it on as a little last minute thing at the end of the video. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to fast forward a little bit in the video to, till when we have our next business. So, see you in a second. All right. So now we've got our first building in the magician shop line done here, right over here. So let's go into what we can do here. So this is just the first level of building, so it doesn't show where the trees will go down to because we have to upgrade it down to an actual line for it to do that. We immediately want our productivity here from the oil press. And we're pretty limited in what we can make immediately. But as you can see, all the ingredients we need are just blackberries and lavender, which we can gather ourselves. So this is actually a very stable starting building because you don't need to buy anything to make the goods here. We'll start on just making some herbal tea while we talk. Herbal tea is kind of your main moneymaker this early on. You can sell it to the market or you can put it in your sale stock. Either one is a good moneymaker. Or you can make plant colorants, which are basically just dyes for coloring things. You tend to sell these to the market, just because uh, I don't think you have many uses for it within alchemy itself. I believe there are some uses. The main people who use this are craftsmen who end up making tailoring shops. But there are a few different trades in the game that do use plant colorants. It's mostly just material for other things. Your main moneymaker at this point in the game, though, uh, is going to be from the herbal tea. You just want to mass produce it, really. So we're going to hire some people to back us up on this. So this is one of those buildings that you can really safely put on automated if you just need something making money in the background. The AI is actually pretty good at controlling this game, or this, um, this building. Not this game. There, there are some buildings in the game where the AI has no idea what they're doing if you put them on AI controlled, but with this one, they do a pretty good job. You can just make some stable cash selling some herbal tea until you want to upgrade it and start getting the crazy things that do all the different abilities. You know, like a stink bombing a business to shut down for about six-ish hours. That's a pretty solid one. That's the kind of stuff that you get with this. And you can also, of course, make perfumes to make people around you have more favor with you. I'm gonna tell them to go get more blackberries. Now, between having a pest house and one of these, the lavender in your area might actually run out every once in a while, but it regenerates, and it regenerates pretty quickly. So, let's just sell all of that to the market and have it just unload and return. And we almost have enough money to actually start up another business right away. The next one we want to do is the pawnbroker, and we'll end it off with the vault. Because right now, we are a citizen without full rights? Yes, which means we can have four different businesses. 
Not that I would generally recommend spreading your businesses at this thin this early in the game. I'm mostly just doing this because it's good for the video. So, normally I'd be getting a lot of workspace this early on. You actually can have a lot of people working in this building surprisingly early. And normally I would be doing that, but that will slow down the immediate game for the sake of the long term, which is not really what I'm looking for right now. I kind of just want to show you the beginning of every business right off the bat. So, in general, this is a safe one to start with if you want something that definitely you can't mess up because it costs you just about nothing to get off the ground. It's stable income. I would say the pest house makes you more money in the early game, though. Uh, slightly more difficult to use, but that soap will make you a ridiculous amount of money if you keep an eye on it. I do recommend that you yourself work in the building, though. Like, you can see we can have more workspace uh, there and hire more people. But the soap is a little bit slow to make. We're actually going to tell that person to get back to making soap whenever they get back to work. And our dude here... Um, right, he's in here right now. He can't make anything else right now. That's fine. I'm actually going to have him... Run over to the church and do a sermon. Generally, if you have multiple scholar businesses, I recommend you have, if you have a church, I recommend you have your guy do church stuff basically the whole time. It's the most beneficial to your player character thing of doing sermons yourself. And we're actually getting pretty good at it. In fact, uh, there is an ability, Great Preacher here. 25% attractiveness bonus on your churches, pulling in more believers. That is very powerful for scholars. Also, uh, something I forgot to mention before. Don't know if it's a glitch. It must be a glitch. But you can see there, we have our progress bar of how close we are to being done. And when you finish praising someone, actually, um, goes up. So let's just praise this guy in the uh, stands. It goes back to default. So we're just going to... He's going to do that for a second. He got some favor there. And then it restarts. Oh, what's, what's this? Non-aggression pact? Sure. So you can artificially extend your sermons by doing that. I'm pretty sure it's an oversight in the game. It will be done. But you can do it if you want to, I guess. It's an option. So, we almost have the money. What's our pest house looking like? Do we have any soap yet? No, because making soap's slow. And how goes this? He's still getting blackberries. Okay. So be it. Have him get some lavender while he's at it. And we're basically going to ignore this business in the background while we get our next one. Just need a little bit more money for the pawnbroker. So let's uh let's just quickly sell some poems. Where to? Normally, I like to build up for large single shipments so that uh, I'm not nickel and diming the market down so it's worth less and less every time. If you do one big selling, uh, like one big selling spree, then it doesn't have time to devalue the good before you sell it, which is what I would normally be doing. But again, time is of the essence. So we're going to get a, a pawnbroker now. Again, this is essentially a... Uh, it, this is essentially a loan shark slash bank. It becomes a bank, but we do mint coin here. It's pretty good business to have. Let's just run our guy over here so he can be here ahead of time. And let's just see. Uh, do we need to do another You're sermon with anyone else me? now? Yeah, we yes. can. We can give another sermon. Someone is demanding protection money of you. So this is like the third time they're trying to rob our church. Uh, it's pretty annoying how often it's going on, and he's asking for all of our money. But I'm actually gonna do it. Uh, just because I don't want to lose the poems I'm working on because that's a lot of money. New building has been finished. What? All right, so we're in our new building here. So to provide credit here, we actually need to put money into it. So if we hit control credit business, we can pour money into the business. So that this is money that we can then lend to people. And how much these amounts are is based on how much your total money is. So that's why it's such little amounts right now. Uh, we're just going to tell him to provide credit right now. Yeah. Bargaining and secret knowledge is how much interest you can get out of the recipient. So you always need one guy sitting there and doing that, I'll point out. 
For copper coins, anytime you make coins, it's just to sell to the market. Uh, you can put it in your sales stock, but no one's going to buy it. Uh, I haven't had people buy it, at least. So you can sell it to sales stock, make some money. You can also get one of each kind of wood to make the paper you need to make it. And you need some of some kind of metal to mint it. It's not a huge moneymaker unless you're already wealthy. It's hard to start off as a pawnbroker. How much do we have in here now? Uh, I want to go up to 500 gold. Okay, so we have about 500 gold we can lend out. It's not much, but it's something. So we want to get our bargaining up a little bit there, now that that is actually a useful thing for us. We, he's getting lavender now? Good. Just making sure. Production has been interrupted. Interrupted. They interrupted the poems. Someone is demanding protection demanding money. Demanding protection you. money again. Because the guards here are incompetent. I might have to I get nah. Tongue tied. Might have to get some thugs to actually take care of that at some point. Hire some thugs to hang around the church. However, uh I can get an ability in level two, which I believe might be a Catholic only one. Believers, ah, da, 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 da. this one, such as saints, no, don't remember. Uh, but it's one that makes it so that people are the building has protection temporarily, which is very useful. Anyway, we have a good amount of money again. Can't do a sermon, no, I can't do a sermon. I believe your guys' sermons and then your own person's sermons, like the people who work here and then your dude's sermons might be on a separate timer, so I might be able to actually run over there and do a sermon right now. Uh, and it looks like no one's no one's really coming here right now. But I think you understand the idea of that. I Basically everything I said about that is all there is to it. It's very simple, but very fun business. Production has been interrupted. Can't... Oh, okay, we're at a stuff for soap. So, you, lavender. Good. And... The sell soap works. market. What? Oh no, it's not a different timer. Okay, it just felt like I'm it. Listening. Okay. Good. And... Yes. I guess holy water. Okay. So, our next thing we want to do is get that crypt, right? Yeah, I don't have enough... Uh, what do I need to do? 6,000? All right, I guess I'll see you when I have 6,000. All right, so we just actually purchased uh, that 6,000 um, bonus. In fact, we should be getting it in a second if... Oh, no, did we already get it? We did get it, right? Yeah, we're a citizen now. We're a full-on citizen. Uh, you can see now our church is actually pretty popular, and the money is starting to roll in. They're buying a lot of hosts. This is This is good. So you can see where the uh, money really starts to roll in once you get things off the ground with the church. And again, we have not even upgraded this church past level one Nothing yet. If we didn't like spread ourselves so thin, we'd actually be able to afford to do that. So we're just going to look at our uh, businesses real quick here. And we actually have a lot of stuff here, so he's going to be on herbal tea again. Not that matters much. And we'll just do our, our trick again, just praise someone in the crowd keep this going so that now we have the money there we are really raking in the cash on this once you have a popular church uh, money becomes quite easy a big thing is that we actually have a lot of rhetoric now eight out of ten so this has become a very good money maker we're gonna go ahead and get a vault so again this is essentially just a graveyard uh, this looks like a good spot for us. We're going to hold down control and just move our mouse to angle it. I always make it a little bit far away from the road just because uh, in the past, it sometimes me completely messed up uh, the pathfinding of buildings before, what? or of carts rather, which has been very bad in the past, but I think they've fixed that. I haven't seen a single cart pathfinding issue since. So we're just going to run our dude down here. A new building has been finished. So, this is our graveyard, vault, crypt, whatever you'd like to call it. Last resting place. So, you can see we're boiling some skulls for some reason in here. So, this is another kind of safe one to start with. You get bones and skulls, you can just 
get them easily. They're free. You don't need to buy them. Then you make things like skull candles, which sell for a good amount. Doesn't really do anything. You can also get ectoplasm, which I believe used to make other things. Uh, ingredient list, that is productivity. Burglary. Uh, burial mound? Storage slot. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is thematic, but it's not terribly interesting. We have some little things we can use. Forge evidence against a competitor. So you can use this to plant evidence on someone, which is interesting, uh, but there isn't a whole lot of interesting stuff here. Use on enemy to reduce his life expectancy a little, and it really is a little so far as I can tell. Productivity, burial gown, that is an item we can make, I believe. Graveyard gates, that's regular production, and curse building ability, yeah. Um, there's some things here, but all around it feels like this building is kind of rushed. It feels like, uh, I don't know, it feels a little bit overpowered. It, it's a little bit like the Scholar's version of the Bricklayer, in that it feels like none of the things really have much consequence, and they're worth a lot of money, despite not being very hard to make. Um... But the bricklayer one, at least, like, kind of makes more sense than this. It doesn't feel different enough from a magician's guild to, I think, warrant being that interesting. But if you're into it, it's a thing you can make. And it is a thing that you can easily fit outside of a city, which is nice. So gives a little bit of variety to the game, I guess. And it's just yet another thing to make the scholar very powerful in politics. But I think I've basically gone over uh, every single business. You have the gist of every business and you basically have my recommendations of how to start off. Uh, before in this episode, though, you may have noticed that I've actually started up with the playthrough, the single player playthrough of uh, the Guild 2 again over on my Hitbox live streaming channel. So... Check that out if you want to enjoy that. I'll have a link to that in the description. The whole thing is uploaded here on YouTube, of course, so the playlist to that will also be on screen. And the next video in this tutorial series is going to be a tutorial on the Rogue, which might also be a long one because it's also got a huge amount of variety in all of the buildings, and they're kind of all things I need to teach you how to do because they're not the most self-explanatory thing in the game. But hey, if you go watch the playthrough I'm doing, uh, I play as the rogue in that, so that's another way to learn if you want to just see the long haul of it. It's a lot more comedic than this is. So, thank you everybody for watching, and until next time, have a nice day. Production has been interrupted.